The magnet faces the Hall Effect sensor, and the sensor reads right down here at this area. So when this goes onto the crankshaft, the keyway is the top dead center, and the Hall Effect is pitched over at 20 degrees. So as the magnet comes by the Hall Effect, the trailing edge of the magnet fires the ignition. The trailing edge of the magnet fires the ignition. And the magnet's approximately 15 degrees wide, so you have 15 degrees of ignition advance available to you through programming. The next thing we're going to do in this video before we start is we're going to disconnect the ignition coil before we hook power up. Okay, launch the MSD uh, graph view software. And with power to the MSD CDI box, when the software starts, you'll see that the pro it shows that the 4217 box is connected. And it will also tell you a little bit about the box. You can, um, if you don't see some of this, you can go to the view screen and you can choose to turn on or off different features. Um, I always leave the timing curve A and B checked. You can uncheck notes. It's really handy is to use this data editor right here. And, but most importantly, right down here is in the option for the setups. If you click crank, crank trigger, you uh, are able to choose whether the tack in is triggered from the crank or the cam. And of course, ours is triggered off the crankshaft with the trigger wheel. We leave it to crank trigger, and right here we do tell it that we are using the MSD Hall Effect, which is this Hall Effect sensor right here that comes with the ignition system. So that's part of the part of the setup. MSD Hall Effect. Other choices are mag fired, two tab, raw hall, but we are going to use the MSD Hall Effect and triggered at crank speed. Um, if you make a change to this, make sure you save it to either the MSD or save your file to the PC. Uh, I didn't make a change here so I can cancel, but if you do make a change or if you're in doubt whether you made a change, press save to MSD and uh, it automatically updates the MSD. Uh, the other very important feature is this pickup reference. Um, there is a procedure to, to measure the pickup reference. I'll go into that in another video, but for the sake of this example, uh, my trigger wheel, the magnet at this radius is approximately 15 to crank degrees wide. And so you need to set that to about 15 degrees and save to MSD and then come down here to the rev limits and you can set your launch limit or your overall box rev limit. Uh, I don't want those involved right now. I don't have the switch on this system. So I set both the launch limit and the max RPM limit to 16,000 RPM, knowing that we won't get to that, and save it to the MSD. Uh, the other feature over here is you can see we are currently on curve A. If you press the switch, you'll see that it just switched to curve B. Curve A, curve B. And you can see that it shows on curve B there's 12 degrees of advance. On curve A, there's 8 degrees of advance. You can see the launch switch is off. You can see the battery voltage is currently 13.8 volts. And this is where you can actually measure the pickup width. If you have it on the engine running and you're able to get the engine to idle down below 2000 RPM, this number will begin to light up and it will actually tell you that the magnet is approximately 15 crank degrees, which is what, as how I filled in this pickup reference to 15 degrees. Delete the dot. Select the dot by turning it red but with one click, right click, delete the dot, and the dot disappears. Select the dot, right click, delete the dot. Select the dot, right click, delete the dot. Until I delete the, the extra dots. For the sake of this example, I 
and we're going to simplify this and delete a number of these timing points because we're going to be running a flat timing curve to simulate a points breaker ignition. So I'll just clean this up. I've already cleaned up curve A by deleting the dots. So now what you see is one dot here and one pink line. When I select that dot and I move the dot up or down, I'm now I'm going to add I'm going to set the dot up to 12, which means it has 12 degrees of advance. It has 12 degrees additional timing beyond what the initial timing is set at. And with this wheel, the timing is set at about 19 to 20 degrees. So on curve B, it's 19 or 20 degrees of initial timing plus an additional 12 degrees of timing added in when you're on curve B, which is selected by this switch. Curve A only has 8 degrees of advance in, so it's going to be around 28, degree, 28 degrees of timing, whereas this is going to be up around 32 degrees of final timing. 